Hey, it's me, Tim. Remember last year I put out a video about this 1961 Vespa that we electrified? Well, it's been about a whole year now of riding it. Of course, the winter I didn't get to ride too much. Um, and I thought I'd tell you about some of the things I've changed, some of the things I like about it, and some of the things I do different in the future. If you haven't watched the original video that I made in conjunction with Spark Cycle Works in Brantford, Connecticut, where we converted this more than 60 year old scooter into an electric vehicle, I highly recommend you check that out. Uh, it was a ton of fun. We had a lot of ups, a lot of downs, a lot of downs. <laughs> But here we are a year later and uh, I'm going to show you the progress. So for the specs, I have a 72 volt battery that is in the part of the bike where the gas can used to be. And I put where the gas filler would go. I created just this little plate out of a piece of uh, closet door, my favorite material to work with, um, to hold the plug. Uh, I have a 3000 watt hub motor with a 72 volt controller on it, as well as a 12 volt step down. So all of my lights and all of that smaller stuff is running off of the 12 volt step down and then the, the motor runs off the 72 volt uh, compartment. They're all easily accessible under this uh, engine cover. When Matt from Spark Cycleworks and I originally built the bike, um, he was and is still thinking about making some type of DIY kit that he can make available to customers. Um, so one of the thoughts that he had, which he will probably be pursuing as he builds his, is making a project box to hold all of these switches and whatnot. So when we did it in the first case, we had a project box just magneted to the side of the bike that had the on off switch. Uh, for the headlights and stuff, but um, I didn't like it because I kept kicking it. So I drilled some holes and I mounted my key and my light switch um, into the body of the vehicle. And they are, uh, so basically the key turns the 72 volt stuff on and the, the switch turns the 12 volt stuff on. And that's really all there is to it for controls. I could go and invest in a speedometer, an odometer, and a battery gauge and all that stuff and mount it to the bike, but I don't want to. I like the fact that it's so simple. So what's really cool about the 72 volt controller I'm using is it has an app that's attached to my phone. Um, and so I can just, when the motor's on, I can pull it up, it's Bluetooth accessible, and I can see all the stats of my battery, my battery life and whatnot. I can make adjustments to it um, to maximize all of the you know the usage of the motor and whatnot um, so all of the controls and accessibility i need for that is right there on my phone i also have a, a free speedometer app that i downloaded off the internet and i have a phone clip mounted to my handlebars i just put my phone in there's my speedometer i don't worry about my phone falling out of my pocket while i'm riding The bike performs great for me and does everything I want to do, goes as fast as I want it to go, except uphill. <laughs> so, uh, easily on flat ground, you know, I'm doing 30, 35 miles an hour all day, uh, and that's not a problem. And those are the types of roads that I'm driving on, 25 mile an hour roads. And so um, I think that the most dangerous thing about riding a vehicle like this in traffic is when you're going too slow. If you're going the same speed as traffic, you're going to be fine. But it's when you're going slow and people get antsy and want to pass you, that's when it gets dangerous and risky, right? Um, so what the problem I have with this bike is big hills. Like medium hills are, are tough, big hills um, slow. And the reason why it's uh, a little bit doggish uh, compared to other vehicles with even smaller motors is partly because of the weight of the body um, where it's not tubular steel, um, but mainly because of the, the tire size. Like if just how many RPMs does a tire this big need to get up to speed than a tire this big, right? Uh, a modern, you know, e-moped or a modern e-bike is going to have a much larger tire. So lower wattage can get that tire moving, you know, more and you get you going faster, yada, yada. Um, the, in the future, uh, I might get a larger motor and a slightly larger wheel to put on the back of this thing um, because I think that would take care of it and that would get me up the hills at 25, 30 miles an hour, adding another thousand watts and maybe another two inches to the diameter of the tire. And in order to do that, I might have to modify the bracket that we have built to put the wheel on. Um, I haven't looked too deeply into it yet. Um, but for now, like I said, I, the, ro the road that I'm taking, there's just that one spot that I really have to worry about. And um, I figured it out. Although I have been pulled over one time and it was going up that hill because I was pulling to the right and there's some potholes and stuff. And so I was swerving to avoid potholes and crossing over the white line multiple times. So I got pulled over because the uh, cop, I think he just wanted to make sure I wasn't drunk. <laughs> um, but he didn't care about the bike. He didn't question the legality of it. I, I told him it was electric and I converted it myself and he was like, oh, cool. So there's that.
progress. So uh, the first thing I noticed about this bike is it is heavy. So I've burnt through brakes already in one season, um, but fortunately the brake pads, see they're a little small for a vehicle that size, but fortunately they're inexpensive. Um, I got four packs of them for $15 on eBay and it took me about 20 minutes to a half hour to swap them out. Not a big deal to do, so something I'm just gonna keep on hand to make sure I can always stop safely. So the vehicle is equipped with the original drum brake in the front, um, and then on the rear, uh, we put this more modern disc brake on the back. Uh, the disc brake is the one that's connected to the rear brake light, so you don't wanna just use the front anyways. Um, and uh, that's the one that gets used most of the time. I, I very rarely even use the front. So working pretty good, but definitely keep those pads fresh so you can stop in an emergency. The other thing I want to do is make sure I can be seen. So uh, the original vehicle, of course, had these old incandescent bulbs in it, and uh, I replaced all of those, including the rear taillight and brake light with these more modern LED lights. Now the front headlight assembly on this, you'll see it a little bit later in the video, actually kind of works as like a wiring hub inside the front of the vehicle, uh, and it's designed to have two bulbs, it looks like, um, that maybe it was a low beam and a high beam, I'm not really sure. Um, and I just converted both of those to hold two of these LED uh, lights so my headlights bright while I'm riding. This vehicle also does not have turn signals and I ride it through traffic in not a very busy city, but a small city. Uh, and I wanna make sure people know what I'm gonna do when I'm gonna do it. So I have a brake light, I have lights, and I've been making the hand signals. If you don't know, you use your left arm and if you're making a right turn, you go up like this. If you're making a left turn, you go straight. And if you're stopping, you go like this. I do have a brake light, but sometimes I do that anyways. Um, just to let people know what I'm doing, but you know, it's 2023 and my guess is 90% of the drivers out there have no idea what any of those symbols mean. Um, so I wanted to put some, uh, some directional lights on. Um, the first thing I did is I bought these old uh, motorcycle lights that I figured I could rig up and mount on the back. I thought I could just drill a hole onto the bracket that holds my tail light, mount these and run some wires and stuff, but uh, there's just not enough room for it to mount properly there. So in order to do that, I'd have to build a bigger sort of box or drill hole somewhere else in the bike, which I don't want to do. So in the time being, I'm holding off on these and I found these really cool uh, little lights that just actually go right into the handlebars. I'm not as concerned about the people in the front knowing where I'm going, but I do want them to know too. And what I like about these lights on the handlebars is that they are visible from both the front and the rear of the bike. So in theory, anybody anywhere could see this light blinking. I just bought an inexpensive motorcycle relay to uh, to wire them to, and these have uh, running lights as well as yellow directional lights. They're just designed that way. They were inexpensive. I bought them off the internet, and um, they are not designed to mount perfectly into the size diameter. Basically, nothing is standard on this bike compared to like all the other bikes and motorcycles out in the world. But I was able to make them fit into the um, into the ends of my handlebars, and I really like them. I just use a simple switch. Uh, that I just zip tied onto the handlebar for now and I uh, ran some electrical tape around the electronic connections so they don't get wet or anything in case it does rain on me. The headlight in this bike actually works like a wiring hub. It's got a bunch of positive and negative terminals that you can sort of work off of to you know, get all your power supplied in one place. And so I thought I'd take advantage of that, but I had to extend the wires off of my new lights to reach them. So what I did is I used what's called a hot air rework station. And these little tubes here, you can see these little pieces of plastic uh, have solder in the middle of them. And so what you do is you stick the wire in each end and then you just hold this thing over and it heats it up and melts it all down. Bob's your uncle, it's all connected. It works really well. The particular tool I used was made by by WEP Tools. They sent it to me along with a soldering station that I'm using in my guitar work and I'll be trying that out as well because they wanted to get some feedback and see what I thought of it. Um, so far it's been a great company to work with and the tools work really well. I'm looking forward to seeing how uh, long they last. I'll put a link in the description in case you need one. Let's talk about range. Now, I don't have pedals on this thing like e-bikes and e-mopeds, so if my battery dies, I am pushing a 100-pound bike home and I don't wanna do that, <laughs> so I never push it. Um, my commute to work is about five miles, so if I do that, 
for two days, that's 20 miles round trip. That's usually when I'll charge. Um, although I have a feeling I could go twice as far because I still have a ton of life in the battery when I do that. Like I said, I'm erring on the side of caution. Uh, the downside is that it does uh, take pretty much all day to charge. So, um, you know, if you are looking to really do a lot of mileage in a day, it's not gonna be able to do it for you. But, you know, for me or someone that's commuting, it works great because I, I do my five miles to work or my 20 miles, you know, after two days and I just plug the bike in while I'm working, let it sit all day or plug it in overnight while I'm sleeping and it's charged the next morning. In my daily commuting, sometimes I have to bring some stuff home and bring some stuff in. I carry my lunch in my backpack, but um, I also have this luggage rack on this vehicle that uh, I've carried all sorts of stuff on. I almost always have something strapped to the back of it. It's not a problem. The extra 10, 20 pounds doesn't make a difference. Um, you know, it works good. I do still need my truck every once in a while, you know, a giant monster truck. Which brings me to the 49 Cycle Club. You might notice the stickers that I put on this vehicle that say 49cc. Um, there's... <laughs> So this is this is my sense of humor. <laughs> Obviously, there's no CCs involved in the measurements of this engine, but the the law in most states. You know the law: vehicles with an engine smaller than 50 cc do not require registration. This vehicle, because of the the electric conversion, and the original vehicle was actually more than 49 cc. Uh, you know, it sort of skates some of that line. And so, what I created was this membership club. Uh, <laughs> it's called the 49 Cycle Club, and so that's what that sticker stands for. Uh, I, I made a website. There's a page you can go buy one of these stickers, and I have this little wallet-sized card that goes with it that kind of kind of lets people in on the joke. But the idea, in all seriousness, is if you have a vehicle like this, and and it's you know definitely it's definitely not a motorcycle. I can't do those types of speeds. It's definitely a, like a scooter, moped type of vehicle. I put that sticker on it to just sort of let people know that that's why it's not registered. This is a vehicle that's in that class of vehicles. You know leave me alone um or you can put it on whatever you want the 49 cycle club is for riders of e-bikes e-scooters and e-mopeds however all are welcome the club is open to anyone in the continental united states and alaska and hawaii and u.s territories international members are also welcome membership benefits include a very official looking sticker and this card membership does not provide any services legal or otherwise discounts perks group meetings secret handshakes insurance common sense or the right of way there is a secret handshake being a member of the 49 cc does not mean your vehicle is street legal or that you are legally allowed to ride it it grants you no immunity from the law anywhere in the world and offers no legal recourse or assistance if you do break the law if you misinterpret the membership sticker to mean anything other than club membership you are wrong officer I don't think I could have ever finished this project without my friend Matt and all the people down at Spark Cycle Works in Brantford. They're a local uh, e-bike company. Um, they sell e-bikes and they also make a vehicle called the Bandit, which is a 2000 watt 52 volt moped. It has pedals. Um, you can register in places where you need to register them or you can ride them like a 49 cc vehicle um, anywhere where, you know, that's permissible. Um, and uh, I actually borrowed one of their Bandits for a few weeks. They took this bike of mine to a motorcycle show where they're showing off some of their work and they wanted to bring some kind of cool stuff, you know. Um, so they brought that to catch some attention and I said, just give me a loaner bike. They gave me a band and I rode that back and forth a few days and it is so awesome. I'm still, part of me is kicking myself for not just investing into a bandit instead of uh, doing this crazy build. But you know me, I like to tinker and I like to push envelopes. So that's why I built this uh, Vespa out. But the bandit, um, all those problems I have with like hills and stuff on the Vespa, are not a problem. You can do 35, 40 miles an hour in traffic on this thing. Uh, it gets up to speed fast with the big tires, stops on a dime, already has directionals and headlights and blinkers and all that stuff. It's not as comfortable and cushy as a ride, like riding on a cloudy Vespa, but it is, um, it's, a, it's a different fun experience. I had so much fun riding that. And if you are looking to get into commuting on electricity, uh, I can't think of a better way. I mean, the bike, you can pick it up. Well, I can pick it up with one hand. Uh, if you take the battery off, it's even easier. Uh, if you live in an apartment, you could easily, you know, roll this thing into your apartment at night. Uh, if you live somewhere, you know, like that, where everything, your life is within a 10 mile radius, like you don't need a car with this. There's luggage racks, accessories for, you can get extra batteries. Uh, just a really great product. So go check out Spark Cycle Works. And also in my state of Connecticut, there was a legislation just passed that gives you a $1,500 rebate uh, from the government on e-bike purchases. Unfortunately, the Bandit doesn't qualify yet. Hopefully it will. But uh, there's all sorts of e-bikes out there that uh, Spark Cycle Works actually carries um, that are eligible. Um, and so that's like, that's like a huge rebate right off the top.
Now I can be as negative and pedantic as the next guy and I can talk about how the, uh, you know, am I actually saving the earth by riding this electric scooter or oh, the technology's not there yet and the range and blah, blah, blah. Sure, all of that doesn't matter. What matters is I am riding the coolest bike in town and I'm having a blast doing it. So I think that one of the big issues with sustainability and I, you know, tackle this with my guitar building industry too, which is, you know, my main focus here is that um, if people look at getting stuff made out of reclaimed or, or doing stuff sustainably as a, as a sacrifice, then of course nobody wants to do it, but it's not a sacrifice. This is so much better and cooler <laughs> than riding the other like gas powered mopeds that are on the road. And this is really going to piss off the purists, but this is actually, I think, closer to the original image of what the Vespa is supposed to be than the original Vespa with its two-stroke engine. This is a quiet cloud that you just ride on. You hear the wind. You hear the birds singing. Uh, this is, I think, what they probably imagined when they designed this thing. What they got in reality was all this blue smoke, two-stroke noise and <laughs> gas and fumes and stuff. That's, you know, that has that image of being this peaceful, joyful thing, but it's not. It's a loud, like, kind of smelly experience. This is not. This is the best. So if I were a smart, normal guy, I'd just go out and buy a Bandit and be done with it. But I'm not done with it. I'm going to continue to tinker with this. Uh, I'm probably going to beef it up a little bit, but that might be a little while. And I also want to do another one out of a more traditional... Um, moped style like something with the, the pedals if anybody has a bike they want to donate let me know um <laughs> you know so i'm definitely not done with this uh, i'm having a blast doing it uh, but i do need to get back to what actually pays the bills around here my guitar making so i'm going to get back to that i hope you all enjoy this little diversion have a great summer see you soon be good